Good morning, kids. I'm so glad that we get to spend some time together this morning. I hope that you all had a great week. Thank you all so much for sharing all the crafts and activities that you guys are completing at in-home Sunday school with your parents. I love seeing them every week. Last week, we had talked about a special job that Jesus gave to his disciples, as well as to all Christians anywhere, everywhere in the world. We are to go and make disciples and share the gospel message with those who have not heard it. And this can be a pretty big and scary job. And in this week's lesson, we're going to learn about someone special that God sent to us and to his disciples to help us do this big job that he has called us to do. This week's big idea is the Holy Spirit is God in us. So I brought something along with me to help you, to show you what, a little bit about what I mean when I say that the Holy Spirit is being God in us. So here I have this beach ball. It's deflated. There's no air in it. It's not really fun. It just kind of doesn't really do anything. I can't bounce it off the wall. It just hits the floor. But if I inflate the beach ball, all of a sudden, it's, we can do stuff with it. We could play beach ball volleyball. We could do all sorts of fun things with it. The beach ball can't actually be used for its best purpose until the air is blown into it. And that's like us with the Holy Spirit. Just like inflating this beach ball, God's Spirit blows us up to give us purpose and to guide us. And we need the Holy Spirit in our lives. Not only does he do that, but he also helps us every day. So we're going to watch our video for the week and see what the Bible tells us in the book of Acts about the Holy Spirit coming to the disciples. Hey, I'm Anna. And I'm Marshall. And today's big idea is the Holy Spirit is God in us. Now, I realize that you might ask yourself, what does that actually mean? And that might sound a little weird. But what it means for us as Christ followers is that God is always with us. And that's actually really cool. Totally. So before we give too much away, let's watch this God story. Usually the Holy Spirit comes in the form of a dove. So peaceful. In Acts, he comes in the form of fire on their heads. It's like, I can just see them now. Peter, your head's on fire. John, yours too. Hi friends, I'm Bruxy and I've got a story to tell. I was once walking down the street in downtown Ottawa when I saw a bunch of guys picking on this one young woman. She was being bullied, she was being hurt. And before I knew it, my body was running toward to help. I didn't even have to think a thought. I was just reacting. Something inside me was leading toward the problem and I was able to help her. And I remember thinking about that. It wasn't even a choice I made. It was like I was being led to love by moving toward the person who was in pain. I think that might be a little bit like what the Holy Spirit does when the Holy Spirit leads us. Sometimes the Holy Spirit, that is the Spirit that brings us the mind of Christ, the person of Jesus into our lives, will teach us how to be Jesus' disciples. Sometimes by leading us along, giving us thoughts that we didn't even think we had. And other times we won't have that experience. Many of us will just have days where we need to read the Bible, learn the teachings of Jesus, and think about it. Think about how we're going to apply it to our lives. But that can also be the Holy Spirit leading us because the Holy Spirit inspired the Bible and can speak to us through the Bible. And all of this leads me to today's big idea. The Holy Spirit is God in us. So today we're wrapping up this series called The Rock because Jesus is the rock that we build our lives on. We're going to read from the book of Acts. The book of Acts comes after the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And one of those authors, Luke, is also the one who wrote the book of Acts. The book of Luke, like the other gospels, are about the life of Jesus. The book of Acts is about the life of Jesus' first followers, the early church. In the first chapter of Acts, Jesus has not yet ascended back to heaven. He's still hanging out in person with his followers and he teaches them for 40 days about the kingdom of God. Jesus said to his disciples, you remember how John the Baptist would baptize people in water? Well, I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. A baptism, you know, being plunged into water and being cleansed by God and rising up to your own new life with Jesus. Jesus says that's what the Holy Spirit is going to do. You'll be plunged into God and God will be plunged into you. Then in verse eight, Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and you'll even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. 
Well, the disciples received the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit. That happens in Acts chapter 2, on a day called Pentecost, when all the disciples are waiting, as Jesus told them, in Jerusalem. They're praying together, and the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And something really wild happens. They, they hear a sound like a rushing wind, and, and then something appears over each of their heads. It's a flame symbolizing the coming of the Holy Spirit, but it's in the shape of a tongue. So the Holy Spirit's going to give them power, but power to talk about Jesus and communicate. And then they leave that room and they go out into the streets and they do start talking about Jesus, but they're all able to speak different languages to all the different people who are there. It's a miracle. Now here's the thing, that same Holy Spirit that performed that miracle with the very first disciples is the Holy Spirit with us now. And as our big idea tells us, the Holy Spirit is God in us. That means when you make the decision to follow Jesus as Lord, you have the Holy Spirit now living in you and me too. And people around you as well. So how can I have a relationship with Jesus through the Holy Spirit? And how can I listen and learn from the Holy Spirit? Well, by listening to what Jesus is saying in my heart. But we can also listen to the Holy Spirit by listening to our brothers and sisters who have the same Holy Spirit living in them. And then together, we gather around the Bible because the same Holy Spirit in you and the same Holy Spirit in me and the same Holy Spirit in all of us is also the one who inspired the Bible to be written. So I hope you see how wonderful it is that we have the Holy Spirit to connect us with Jesus and to connect us with one another. It's such a beautiful thing to belong to the church, which means the gathering together of the family of faith. Hey, and I'm also glad and grateful that I got to hang out with you for this series. I'm Bruxy. Peace. What? What was that? Oh, turn to the person beside you and answer the following questions. Oh, before the time runs out. Question time. When Jesus had gone to heaven, the disciples all met together. Then the Holy Spirit came with the sound of rushing bulls, shoppers, wind, or sports cars. The Holy Spirit filled all the who were there, men, women, kids, or believers. Can you say the key verse before the battle is over? Get ready! Three, two, one, go! Say it with me. The Lord is my rock and my place of safety. He is the God who saves me. My God is my rock. Psalm 18, verse 2. Isn't it amazing how the Holy Spirit helps us witness to people about Jesus all across the world? Absolutely, and the fact that the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in all Christ followers means that we have the opportunity to love and encourage each other as we've been loved and encouraged. Totally, so we're gonna hear a story from our friend Jackson and how the Holy Spirit helped encourage him through some tough times in his life. I know that burritos are delicious, I know that my family loves me, and I knew from a very young age that Jesus loved me, cared for me, and was always gonna be there for me. I'm Jackson Kuhn from Prairie Sound, Ontario, and even though I knew God from a very young age, it did not mean that I didn't have any struggles. I grew up playing hockey. Uh, I started when I was three years old. Uh, for me, hockey was always a family event. It was something I did with my family. Uh, my father would make a, a pond rink for us in behind our house uh, every year. Um, and it wasn't until much later in life that I thought I'd even want to do it competitively. It was something that we did just for fun uh, as a family uh, with my brothers. Um, 
And as I grew older, it became more and more competitive and I started to see some of the opportunities that I could have with it. And it was in those opportunities that really made me strive for excellence in the game of hockey. One really challenging thing that happened to me when I was younger was uh, when I was nine and a half, my uh, father passed away in a tragic accident. And that really was the catalyst for change in my life and how I started to realize um, more who God was, what was he about, was he there for me? Um, and this was really a real life test about was I going to be able to follow this so-called God and was he gonna be there for me? I really felt like when I was 11 years old that I was on a path that was good and I thought how could I be on a good path and some of those examples would be um, my brother being my older brother being so strong and so willing to lead me and still be there for me and he was such a good kid and I thought wow how is he like that and if he wasn't a good kid surely I wasn't gonna be good because I was following him so closely uh, we had so many men from the community pour into my life and I thought Man, there's no way they would do that on their own time if they weren't inspired by God because God knew that I needed that in those moments. So I came to this point where um, I knew that God was real and I had felt Him and I had experienced Him. And the Holy Spirit was clearly alive in me. And I got to this point through just so many people telling me, there's something special about you. You're so much fun. Like, you know, I, you're so mature for your age. And I thought, no one taught me this. It had to be God, and I realized at that moment, just, to, just right around 13 years old, that God was enough, that He would take care of me through any valley, and He is there in the mountaintops, but it seems to be in those valleys that we need Him most, and we look for Him. And I had felt that I had hit the lowest valley of any secular point. Dying is the end. It's, there's no good there and God created something beautiful out of it. So after high school, I went right on to play um, university hockey, which in and of itself was a miracle, actually. <laughs> and uh, through university, I really grew, and I grew more in my faith, and I grew to understand more that um, my life was simply an opportunity to serve God and that wherever he sent me, I would go and I would serve whatever purpose he had for me. And through university, it wasn't always easy. Uh, and I had a lot of work to do because I knew that God was gonna open doors down the road. I had that feeling. And sure enough, after my last year of university, I was able to go on and play in Finland and then also uh, in Germany for three more years. And in that time, I was able to be salt and light in those places and I knew that even though those places weren't always going to be places where God was talked about um, but I knew that the Holy Spirit working through me could be a light and a salt to some of those guys and some of those guys I still talk to today and I know that I inspire them day in and day out. Today I'm back in Perry Sound married with one baby boy his name is Michael. I currently teach him with Soxing First Nation grades 6, 7, and 8 and I know that in my life with Christ, in my walk still, that I have a lot to learn. And I still know that God's gonna teach me more and more about how he's enough, and I hope that inspires you. Question time. When Jackson was 11 years old, what was his experience of God? How do you know that God is with you? I love how Jackson was able to recognize that the people in his life, his older brother, men from the community, were actually inspired by the Holy Spirit to be an example for him and encourage him. 
And the fact that at such a young age, he understood that God is enough just shows that the Holy Spirit was working in him. And it brings us back to our big idea. The Holy Spirit is God in us. Absolutely. So let's break off into small groups and see what this looks like in our own story. So wow, I'm so glad that God sent the Holy Spirit to help us. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I had to do everything in my own strength. I'm so thankful that we have the Holy Spirit. Just before you guys go and complete your Sunday school lessons or join the regular service online, we need to do a little bit of a draw for the winner of last week's family challenge. It was the Earth Day challenge where you were supposed to decorate sharing the story of Genesis. So we have all the names of those that participated in my little flower pot here going to pull out the winner. The winning family is the Jobin family. So I will make sure to get you guys your $10 iTunes gift card at some point this week. Thank you so much for everybody else that participated. I loved seeing your pictures. It really brought joy to my life. And I hope that it was a great opportunity for you to share some of what you believe with your neighbors. So this upcoming week, our family challenge is one that I'm really excited about. And it's all about music. So on Tuesday and Thursday, there's going to be three different posts that I put up, and each one will have an audio clip from a popular worship song or a Disney song. And the first family to post the correct title will earn 10 points. The family with the most points at the end of the day on Thursday will also win a prize. And bonus points will be given to any family that posts a photo of them singing one of the songs in the contest. So have some fun singing with your family and trying to guess the songs. Have a good week, guys. I can't wait to see all of you on Wednesday night at Kids Connect. If I don't see you Wednesday, we'll see you next Sunday.